Jamie Millen, uh, North North Islander from New Zealand. A uh, bit of a bridesmaid in your career of sidecars, unfortunately, but that win's coming. So uh, how are you doing tonight, Jamie? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Yeah, having a beer. <laughs> so it's not too bad. Well, it's good to finally chat to you because uh, you came over to Aussie and did quite a bit when I was away from sidecars and... Your passenger used to be a little kid that I used to take his junior to meetings, and then all of a sudden he's a man swinging on the back of your sidecar. Yeah, oh, Bailey Ogilvy. Yeah, we did uh, three seasons together, so it's pretty good. So we'll chop and change all over the place with this because I get very bored with structure. I'm not that dude. So yeah. um, I want to ask... Why the pink and like the zebra, zebra sort of striping? Why those colours? Uh, I started off with the zebras on the uh, solos. I don't even know. It just it happened. And then when we went to the sidecar, I thought, well, I'm kind of an underdog. I've never really ridden a sidecar, so we'll put a bit of pink under it. And the zebra stripes had pink beside them, and then it kind of just carried on, and now it's just developed, I suppose. It's always one of those things too, like the crowd always remembers something that stands out. They're not going to remember a blue and a black bike and a white bike. They're all this, they all look the same. Someone's going to see a pink bike, might be coming third, but they're the ones that we still are in the pits after some of the meetings at some of the clay tracks. We're still there late at night getting photos with kids. So, You touched on two things I was going to talk about later, but I do want to talk about now is presentation and being like a someone that does stand out to the crowd so you've pretty much answered this question already so you're you're someone with the pink that actually does stand out quite a lot yeah it was always the idea just to try and make it different as well because speedway new zealand's always been the i don't know or well, sidecars anyway has been the class with the black t-shirts it's always been renowned for that they usually wear leathers with a black t-shirt over it with a number on it so they've developed over the years and they've I don't know, it's kind of good to change it up and put a bit more colour into it, make it look more professional anyway. We were fast and that, but they were sort of lacking the, the overall sort of bling and all that, and that's developed quite a long way now. You see a lot of teams that are looking really, really good. But moving away from that, you guys do something that we don't get to anymore, which is you run on sort of deco and you run on clay. So... Yeah. what's the difference and how do you approach it? Uh, so we run on clay tracks over here and it's on, well, it's pretty much a gamble if the track's going to be cut up. Obviously we're running with cars. so It's good that they still get us there, but um, we run with 17 inch road bike racing wets. So like, like super bike tours, we put those on the front and the back and pretty much run it like that. We have an extra slot in the, where the rear wheel goes. We have a, another slot lower so we can run the bike at the same sort of when you're on the handlebars itself what's it like because i know clay is an actual you know i'm not a biologist but i know for sure that clay is really tacky yeah it definitely tacks off it's not it's not the same as speedway i don't reckon it's not, definitely not as fast in ways like you can't go flying into the corner and hold the gas on like you can on a dirt track and throw it sideways you've kind of got to ride it slightly, almost like a road racing sidecar until it slickens off. If, if you get it set up right and the track slickens off, then it's then it's good fun. Look, it's a, you're on then, but yeah, it takes a bit to get the bike set up right to match the track. Have over in Australia here, they're very manicured, very flat, but very slick. And I noticed that people like to set their bikes up super drivey and you can see people front wheel and coming into corners. Is that what it's like on a clay track and how do you set up around that? You just got to try and loosen them up as much as you can. With obviously, the chair wheel as much as you can, get angle into it or whatever. And then in, with your tyre pressures, gearing, like that's one of those endless chases. I've got a um, New Zealand built bike for clay. So I tried to run my Aussie one that I brought back, my Mitch, but nah, it didn't have a butt. It was, it's obviously not developed for it. So it didn't really work very well. So I changed straight back to the New Zealand built bike, which is a G6R thousand. Isn't that interesting? And I know there's a Kiwi bloke over there, and I, I know I'm going to get his name wrong. Um, I think it's Mike Zahn. He makes, uh, I think they're Stinger frames. Yeah. And um, 
he's actually got the number one Aussie bike right now. Yeah, well, not only that, he's got the Mano Two Champ bike, which is mine. But I've got a my New Zealand bike's a Stinger frame as well. Yeah. What What do you find the difference is between say a Mitch, which we all run over here, more more for sort of um slick tracks and sort of deco what's a stinger frame like for the kiwi clay track stuff pretty much for muchness really like it's obviously something in the geometry has changed slightly to make them handle that good like but it's night and day different when you ride them on clay competed but then they work on dirt as well so like they're kind of an all-rounder which is a bit different like the, the mitch will work on dirt i didn't i didn't like it on clay I don't know if it was the engine setup, the setup that I had that night. Like I've only run it once, but it, it, nah, it wasn't my cup of tea. So I flagged that straight away. I didn't want to damage the bike on a rough track. As I don't know, I like that bike too much. So went back to the Sting and kind of they kind of developed for it and made it a bit stronger. Whether it's the steel that Mike uses or some idea that he's come up with as he does. I have heard that he's a bit of a wizard and I know it's a renowned thing that um, Kiwis do have a lot of ideas and, you know, some are amazing, some are crap, but that's the same with Australia. It's just cool to see some of the engineering come out of um, the Kiwi fellas. Yeah, definitely. Like Mike's been a bit of a wizard over here for a long time. He's come up with a lot of ideas. Obviously, everyone's come from the Mitch idea. He's the one that's developed the whole sidecar sport as such and then it's just progressed from there and Mike's one that's putting a little bit of his own touch on it and a clever engineer I suppose he's got some different ideas that are slowly coming through as they are from what I understand you hooked up with uh, Murray Hackett who only his shop's only about 10 minutes from my house but how did you yeah. hook up with uh, Murray and what, what was your deal with him Um, oh he's just a New Zealand legend from Speedway and over here and I've known him as I was a kid growing up and always knew the name and everything else. And then I don't actually know how we started talking again when we were over there, but I worked with his nephew at the same shop at the same, or at the time we started racing over there. So um, yeah, we're talking and that, and I don't know, it just developed into Bryce's Bryce and Bailey, but no Murray as well from New Zealand. So yeah, just caught back up then and, when I was over there racing for, uh, what was it? I had a meeting in Brisbane one weekend and then we were doing Tamworth the following weekend. So Murray said, stay over and I'll give you a job for a week and come come work in the car shop. It's really cool that there's people behind the scenes and there actually is a very strong Kiwi um, fan base and people and everything here, you know, like everywhere you look, especially where I'm from, there's, there's always someone pops up either in the car scene or sidecars or whatever, that's the most common I hear is Palmerston North. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Palmy's a pretty big track over here. Yeah. They get like 60 stock cars in a night and plus kind of thing. Like, yeah, it's pretty insane. I've been fortunate enough to actually watch the Australian version of um, the stock cars come race up in Toowoomba one time. And it was madness. I had to commentate it and I was just put myself in pretty much a heart attack. That was so exciting. But I know over in New Zealand that they're a full time, they're a big deal. Oh yeah. We've got, um, what is it? The super stock teams nationals is what they call it. And they get teams from all around the country, different tracks and, they do a one-off, like, oh, it's a two-night event down in Palmerston North, and it's like a sellout crowd. It's like 15-odd thousand people go sold out both nights. It's already sold out, and it's in February the 6th, I think it is, something like that, fifth year. So getting back to um, some of the questions that come through from the internet, we've already answered one about the pink, but uh, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, but I think, it's the same dude from Stinger Frames. It's Mike Zakin. Mike Zahn, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> he asks, what's it going to take for you to actually hit that top step of an NZ title? Well, I don't know. I've been trying for a while and don't seem to fucking get it. <laughs> yeah. If someone's got any tips, let me know. <laughs> I think it's probably one of those things that it's going to be that monkey on your back and you, you'll hit a meeting where 
you probably think you're going terrible, but you're probably going to be going really good and then get a good gait and it'll happen. Yeah, we did that at the what is it, New Zealand title in Christchurch. That's the, that's the worst one. Won nine races from nine starts all the way to the final, led the final to the last corner and hit a pothole. <laughs> so like 20 metres from a finish line and still fucking cocked it up. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but that is crazy. Like, you could have yeah. nearly thrown the bike over the finish line. Yeah, pretty much. But... <laughs> You don't get good from winning everything all the time with no setbacks. Surely that number one's got to be coming if you keep chipping away at it. Yeah, some of the top guys never got it either, though, like Spud. He never won it. Of all people, like, you'd think he would have won it a few times, but, yeah, he never had any luck either. So with Kiwis coming over in, in sort of my time of being on the tools and stuff, it's always been um, Spud and Philippa. They were the big deal that came to Australia and um, when I went away I didn't see the wave of the other Kiwis come over so what sort yeah. of kicked it off for you and some of the other lot that come over um, I think well James Douglas and Aiden Twaits they were already going over there from Invercargill they'd already, st- they'd already done like a season over there before I went over and then there was another guy Craig McMasters which Bailey was swinging with at the time and then for some reason Craig pulled out of a world title and Spud was the one that actually couldn't ask if I'd go to try and they had an extra Kiwi spot and then yeah he's he's the one that kind of pushed us in the right direction I suppose to go over there because I was only really just doing it for a bit of fun over here didn't actually think too much about it and then yeah and then he kind of just he set it up and made it happen and Got on with Mark Mitchell and sent the bike over there and kind of took off after that. How did you grow up? How did that all sort of come about? Did you Were you a North Island kid? Were you into motorsport or had that up? Yeah, uh, my dad used to race sidecars. So always growing up at speedway tracks and doing it, all that sort of stuff. And then when we got a little bit old, like we've always been riding bikes as kids and carried on through and then got to about, I think it was seven years old. And um, we were at Speedway one day, and I said, nah, I think I want to race to the parents. And we started a junior class. There was no juniors back then at that time. So there was another family from the start, Marshall, like the starter. He had a couple of kids as well, and they had motorbikes. And from there, we said, we'll ride. So we had three of us and kind of carried on from, yeah, from about seven, I started races, I suppose, on a KX60. It was a motocross bike at the time. And then got a junior bike the following season when I was eight. And then carried on from then, solos. Solos at that point in time. Did you have the feeder classes that we have now where it's one, two, five juniors, two fifties, then five hundreds? Uh, at that point there was like in the well in Auckland there was only I think after a season or so there was about three junior bike one two fives. And we like kind of and we were riding on the big track. We didn't have little tracks back then like you guys do in Aussie. But so we were riding around a big track, so you didn't even really slide it for like years. So it was just really just riding around the thing, big going that slow, I suppose, in the long run. Crazy. And then at what age were you when you actually hopped on a 500? Uh, I got a dispensation from Speedway New Zealand at 14 because I was like, I was keeping up with the older boys and they were all moving up. They were already 16 in there. So, yeah, so they gave us a dispensation so I could move up with them. And then, yeah, pretty much carried on from 14. On a 500. With the solos, did you jump straight into sort of, I think at the moment, the big motor is the GM. So what sort of motor and that were you running back then? No, nah, we used to run Jawas really. And then they went to the JRM. So we got those when they, obviously Jawa changed over to JRM, changed to them. And then, and then went to England. And when I was over in England, I got a GM. It was the first one I had. Having, having a ride over there and there. We're sort of learning about each other as we go. I, I didn't realise you actually went over to England to race solos. Yeah, I went over trying to get a team. I wanted to get into the like, English side of Speedway. And because I had mechanic for Jason Bunyan when he did the World GPs in New Zealand, because he's a good mate of mine. So um, he said, oh, come over and pick crew for me and have a ride and see if you can get into somewhere. So I know with um, Australia, you've got to finish in like the top, whatever in your state or whatever it is to be able to glide. So 
did you actually get any races over there and what was the deal there? Um, we raced mainly second halves. Yeah, like just doing the second half meetings, trying to just get, I suppose, some exposure. And then I took over all the paperwork because it's been the um, British patriality side of it coming for the National League. I thought I'd try and get into the National League. And then um, that's when all the kind of, yeah, it all kind of changed with the ruling. And then you had this and that. And then you only kept racing the Premier League if you didn't have the right patriality. And, and I took all over the paperwork. I thought that would have been enough of my grandparents and stuff like that. But it wasn't. So we, we rode it a couple of tracks and kind of pretty much had a couple of signings already sorted just for like National League to start off with. And that's when it all kind of come out that the patriality stuff, I didn't have the right paperwork and I would have had to fly back to New Zealand to get the paperwork sorted to then fly back. And I was like, ah, nah, I'm over it. Don't even bother. So we did a few more meetings and then we come home really. So I think we're there for about eight months. So we're doing that coming back to New Zealand. What was the plan? Were you burnt out of Speedway or was there a new plan to come up with? No, nah, definitely not. No, nah, I just obviously thought maybe I might need to try and get a bit faster and probably give up on the whole racing professionally idea. I just kind of thought we'd just kind of enjoy it really and have a bit of fun. And then I had a couple of accidents pretty much as soon as like my English bike come back to New Zealand. I had still had my New Zealand bike and it crashed one one week. And then when they did, um, they do an international tour, they used to like bring over some English guys so they could ride in the winter or their winter. And I crashed one bike at Rosebank, which is in Auckland, on the Sunday. And then the following Saturday, I crashed the other bike at Bike Rack Park. And then that was it. I pulled the pin after that. I said, no, I'm done. I've had enough now. So. In that period of time of not racing to coming back to it, what did you do? Did you focus on your trade or, or, or just trying to get the body better and just have fun in your normal life? Was that when I gave up racing? Nah, one of the bikes I put for sale, the guy swapped me a sidecar. I never even planned on racing a sidecar. <laughs> That's how I got into sidecars. <laughs> I thought it was a piss take, and then I went out and had a ride on it. <laughs> I love it. I love hearing how people get their starts because, you know, there is the cookie-cutter thing of, oh, Dad rang up Bernie Coppy and got me a bike and rah, rah, rah. I yeah. really like hearing the different ways people go through. Yeah, yeah. No, because I originally, oh, when I was riding solos, I was swinging for my brother as well sometimes, part time. So never really planned on riding one. That so, changed. Like I said, we'll um, keep chopping as we go. So Mike Zahn's got this is his last question he'll ask. Um, I suppose this is all depending on COVID and restrictions, but have you got any plans to come back and race over here? Yeah, I'd love to go back there. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, I miss riding over there. It's not the same here. Oh, I don't know. So touch on that because I know in New Zealand, from what I've seen, you know, talking to Bailey and that, there's a lot of races to be done. So does that mean that the competition's not as thick or tracks are too different or what's the differences? Oh, uh, there's a lot of racing over here to be done. Like, as I suppose there is over there too, you just need to travel. But it's just it's just trying to, I don't know, get trying to get the time against competitive races, if you know what I mean. Like like we go over there, take Gilman, you're lucky if you get a couple of thirds, probably a last. Maybe if you're lucky you might get a second or a first. But like that's cool. Like I'd I'd prefer to be chasing something and learning than if you're leading at a club day, like it's, it's expensive to run at a club day. Like when I was going to Aussie, like you get a bit of travel money, you get a bit of prize money, whatever. You don't really get that a hell of a lot here. But like something that, I don't know, makes it a, it makes it pretty hard when you're like racing in the South Island and you don't really get anything for it. Like yeah, at one point when we're doing those East Coast roundups, by the time you get a bit of travel money and a bit of prize money for your place, it almost was covering my flights. It's almost cheaper that it was racing out of Australia than it is to race here. I do want to talk about that because um, Jeff's done a great thing and so is Slady. They, they've come up with a really cool thing. I've done two Tamworth trips last year. One was a rain out, but good Chinese food. But um, <laughs> the, the next one was the New South Wales titles. And 
what a great meeting and how they run it, how they structure it. It's just good for Speedway sidecars. Yeah, those two blokes are bloody legends, really. Like from the times that I spent with both of them, like what they're doing for the sport, trying to do for the sport, for Tam with club in general, like like all of that stuff they were doing, especially with Newcastle, like that Newcastle's like one of those memories that I always have is going down that grandstand straight and it was just, I don't know, it's like an atmosphere that was unreal. It was, as a rider's perspective, it was just great. Like, yeah, you can't really thank those guys enough for what they were doing. 